question, does Hashem need us? The answer is absolutely not. Anybody who says that Hashem needs us or that He benefits from our mitzvahs or anything in the world is being oiver avoy dezora. Is built in itla bezulosai. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu, meaning that He doesn't need anything or any body, and not only that, but it will be impossible for Him to benefit from anything that happens anywhere. It's impossible for Him to change. It absolutely, the answer is no, there's nothing to discuss here. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, he didn't create the world for him to benefit in any way whatsoever. He didn't create the world because he needed to create the world. He didn't create the world because he was missing anything. Chas v'sholem, anybody who says that is being oivir avoy dezora. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world totally from chesed, for no other reason that he wanted to benefit us. On page one of Rabbeinu Tam's Sefer HaYoshor, he brings a raya to this up from a svara. Now, besides the svara that he says, it's muchach like that. If you know anything about a kaddish baruch Hu, if you understand the first four animamins, you understand that a kaddish baruch Hu cannot change, he cannot gain. But Rabbi Nutam has another angle. He says that there are three, two things that exist in the bria, two things that exist in the whole universe: Hashem and the bria, nothing else. And therefore, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, he either created the world for his sake or for the sake of the Bria. Mathematically, there's no third alternative. Unless you say, which doesn't make any sense, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world for no reason, and that makes absolutely no sense. And therefore, since the only two options are that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world for his sake, or HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world for the sake of the Bria, and since HaKadosh Baruch Hu cannot gain and he cannot change, the only valid option is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world for the sake of the Bria. So the answer is no, HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not need us. Hashem is totally altruistic. And I know where this question comes from. This question comes from the fact that when we do Chesed, no matter how L'Shem Shemayim we do it, we still gain something. Anything we do, we do something for gain, even if we do something L'shem Shemayim. It's always because there's something driving us. We always gain a mitzvah. We gain a place in Elam Haba. We always gain something. And therefore, there are people that, in their mind, compare HaKadosh Baruch Hu to us. And they think if we always gain something, we need the mitzvahs. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu also needs the mitzvahs of us. And when we do a chesed, uh, we benefit by doing the chesed. Even if we mean L'Shem Shemaim, we still benefit. So people think that HaKadosh Baruch Hu also must benefit in some way. Don't think like that. We are human beings, and therefore we can benefit. We are human beings, and we are able to change. We are able to grow. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't grow. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't change. And when HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world... He created the world only out of chesed. It's a type of chesed that we will never experience. Completely altruistic chesed. Not only did Hashem not have any other motive, He did not gain anything. You know, somebody means something totally to Hashem Shemayim. He still benefits from His deed. HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not benefit at all from anything that He does. It's only we who benefit from everything HaKadosh Baruch Hu does. Next question. Go ahead. Can you explain why you say that to say that is about a zara? Yes, because in order for our, in order for it to be true, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu would gain, would benefit from our mitzvahs or from anything, it would mean that a Hakadosh Baruch Hu was missing something before he got the mitzvah, and that's impossible to say. That's making Hakadosh Baruch Hu physical, because it's a uh, quantification. And two, you're saying that Hakadosh Baruch Hu is able to change. And that can't be either. What's this question? What about the idea that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when he created the world, he became a melech, because ein melech beloyam. Uh, all the titles that we give to HaKadosh Baruch Hu of melech, and we say ein melech beloyam, uh, and we, we give it to Hashem, none of this means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu benefited or changed. Uh, like we say in Adon Olam, the truth is, Hashem was king, meaning as much as he's king now, he was king before he created anything. Uh, but 
Leis Nasoba Chefsoi Kol Azay Melech Shmoy Nikro, but then he was called king. That's all it is. It's a title that we give HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's not a characteristic of HaKadosh Baruch Hu when we say Melech. And when we say in Melech Bulayam, or we say all these other things, we have to be very careful not to make the mistake that it means something about Hashem. I remember in Shul, we once giving a, uh, a shir in, in Ramchal. And there was Lubavitcher guy in the shir. And we were talking about why Hashem created the world. And the Ramchal says, like everybody else, there was no disagreement to this. There cannot be any disagreement to it, as I mentioned, that Kodesh Baruch created the world to do chesed for the Bruim. There, there cannot be any other reason. So he raises his hand and he says, what do you mean the Tanya disagrees? Because the Tanya says Hashem created the world because he wanted a dira batach toinim. And Tanya does say that. But when we gave the Tanya shir and shul, we explained that that's not what it means. And not only that's not what it means, this is why a person should not learn Tanya or these Hasidic Shesvarim before he knows uh, the Ikre Emuna. Otherwise, you could become an Oivet Avoy like this person was. So I explained to him that that's not what the Tanya means. Uh, at Bishas Maisa, do you remember uh, a number of years ago, that's when this happened, uh, former President Bill Clinton opened up an office in Harlem. He was former president. He opened up an office in Harlem. Now, he didn't need the office in Harlem. He Dafka wanted an office in Harlem. But the reason he off- opened up an office in Harlem was because he wanted to benefit the uh, residents of Harlem. It wasn't for his sake. It was for their sake. When we say HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted a dir b'tachtoinim, we mean he wanted a dir b'tachtoinim for the sake of the tachtoinim, for the benefit of the tachtoinim, not for his benefit. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created this elaborate uh, master plan for Bria Sa'ilam that we're going to do mitzvahs and we're going to earn our schar because that way we're similar to our Kaddish Baruch Hu. And therefore you need a Ruchnius and Gashmius combination uh, to create a world. And our Kaddish Baruch Hu came down here uh, to make a dir b'tachtoinim to give the world a a, um, a dose of Ruchnius. But it's for our sake that our Kaddish Baruch Hu did all of this. It doesn't mean HaKadosh Baruch Hu did it for his sake. And so when we say HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world because ain't Melech Belayam, when we say HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to be Melech, we mean HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to be Melech for our sake, that he should be, that, that we should be able to say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Melech. It's for our benefit. Hashem does not benefit for anything. Here's the way this works. There, Yud Gimel Ikrim are immovable. You can find a hundred Gemaras that seem to say Fakert, you have a hundred kashas. Normally, you know, I always say this. If you have a toisvis and a hundred gemaras fakert, uh, a tamar chacham will say you have a shver toisvis. And amaritz will say you have a hundred shver gemaras. But if you have one of the yud gemalikrim, and you seem to have a hundred gemaras fakert, you have a hundred shver gemaras. The yud gemalikrim do not move. So kal if you have something that you see in the Tanya and that the Loshan, for whatever reason, seems to say that chas v'shalom HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world for HaKadosh Baruch Hu's benefit, which is logically, an al pi chazal, an al pi psukim, impossible, unless you make HaKadosh Baruch Hu into a getchka, you have to understand the Tanya differently. And therefore, if you're going to learn Tanya, I would highly recommend that first you learn the Shari Yichud Vahamuna first, which will set the parameters of these things that you're allowed to think, and then uh, learn the rest of the Tanya. And even if you do, get a Rebbe that knows what he's talking about and don't learn it on your own. But people who think that a Kaddish Baruch who created the world because he wanted a dear B'tach Toynim, like somebody, uh, Lahavdil, who wants a, uh, uh, wants to buy a condo in Florida. That's a dear B'tach Toynim. And that Chas V'Shalom can never apply to Hashem.